Under the Radar, bringing movies and people together, one frame at a time. Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is a special edition of Unger the Radar, bringing movies and people together, one frame at a time. And it's going to be a very M. Night Shyamalan heavy episode tonight, uh, because the new film Trap, uh, starring Josh Hartnett, directed by Shyamalan, is currently in theaters. It is the uh, acclaimed Ator's latest thriller, and it is more of the same from this wonderful filmmaker who's... Uh, career has basically gone up and down over the last couple of decades. Obviously, we all know him uh, making a big splash with uh, The Sixth Sense in 1999. And since then, he's gone on to create some of the most well-known thrillers in cinema history, almost like a modern-day Alfred Hitchcock. Um, I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn there, but yeah, he is a fantastic filmmaker. And tonight, we're going to get into his works and it's going to be a fun show uh but before we do that i want to introduce my wonderful panel of guest critics we've got back from more it's been a while sir but i'm back you're back and i'm very pleased mr chris clemente hey hey <laughs> how's it going Andy? I'm, I'm i'm very excited about tonight yeah very excited. <laughs> as am i sir as am i <laughs> and back again mr brian smith welcome back brian you're a a repeat uh, guest of the show, and I'm I'm very grateful for that. Thanks, Randy. Thanks for having me. It's a really cool topic you have here, so yeah, looking forward to it. Because <laughs> I I know you are a big horror buff, so I know this is within your wheelhouse. So I'm very excited that you're here. And my Shaman's latest is Trap, and it stars Josh Hartnett. Like I said, a big complaint I had was the trailer because it really revealed the entire movie, and <laughs> I was very disappointed with that, but the mood was decent. Um, basically, Hartnett plays um, a father who is also leading a double life as a serial killer. No spoilers. This was all in the trailer. And basically, he takes his daughter to a concert uh, and only to find out that the entire concert is this elaborate trap put on by the police to try and catch him. And, of course, there's kind of twists and turns along the way. Um, it's actually a very taut, interesting thriller. And I was pretty um, pleased with Hartnett's performance, as well as his daughter, as well as uh, some of the other cast. But I think this is definitely Hartnett's show. And he really uh, did a, a good job here. It's not one of Shyamalan's best, by any means, but it is a decent thriller and I think it's worth the, the price of admission. So, Chris, it's been a while. Uh, what were your thoughts on Trap? Um, I I adored it. I I love Trap. Um, I think it is uh, M Night's um, wheelhouse. I think it's his sweet spot. Um, is he swinging on all? Is he swinging three thousand? I I think at this point in his career, it is. Like I, I feel like this is his mojo right now, and I love it. I love, I love the fact that he can take big risks, mm. and it's either a swing and a miss, or you know it really lands home. And I think it just is a testament to how creative he is, how original thinking he is, um, and we don't see that enough today. So, I, you know, I, I, I really left the movie theater very pleased um there were moments while i was watching the film that i was literally at the edge of my seat you know i was in suspense i was gasping um yeah i think if you really drilled down uh and and, and looked at it from a technical level there are some flaws there are some plot holes but i think that kind of lends itself to to genre of filmmaking which he which he does mm -hmm. um but i think that this type of movie that is a mid low to mid budget movie um that is yeah there's horror elements but there's also very suspense it's, it's more or less a cat and mouse story more than a, a horror story i think right. um but there are definitely elements of horror in there um but i think i think that's where he shined and I think uh this 
in his most recent years is kind of up there um, in in the films that we're getting from him. So I, I, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he has done a lot of supernatural stuff, which is great, mm -hmm. but it's really good. Like uh, most of the movies I like to review on this show are very are about human beings. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Trap is definitely about that. There's there's no kind of like otherworldly element or threat here. It's really yeah. it's a very believable story. It's grounded, which I really yeah, appreciate. It is. It's it's very much grounded. I didn't um I didn't get the you know I didn't get an edge of supernaturalism like like split or or unbreakable. It's it I um it was there was a moment where I thought it was kind of like be that like be another sequel to <laughs> yeah to, to unbreakable um uh because it re it was reminiscent a little bit of split um right. but uh but i think it, it it i think it it grounds itself it's it's believable but yet like to have someone who's such you know a cold-hearted meticulous um um villain you know is is really interesting to see. Um, I love the fact that it was balancing a concert film with a suspense film. Mm. And you saw a kind of, I, I feel like the movie was split in half between a concert film uh, that took place in an arena right. and something that was very small uh, in a house um, that was more reminiscent of, of what we would get from a Night nice Shyamalan. So I, I felt like he took some he took some risks. He he ventured outside of his wheelhouse. He had his daughter, who's a who's a musician, filmmaker, I mean, a musician, uh, and and songwriter, um, do a large part of the, the the music and and the music writing for the film. So, um, and I, I you know there's this this big trend nowadays in Hollywood with like shaming nepotism and and, and nepo babies, but um, I felt. I felt like she was in good hands. I felt like she wasn't overused. Um, I felt like she was very talented. Uh, the songs were great. Um, I I believed the suspense that she provided when it was more one on one with her. So I thought she was a a, a fine choice, you know. So I, I I I I dug that element of it. So, um, and I love Josh's performance. He was great. Um, I, I mean, I, I really had a, I really had a good time with this film. Like there you know, were moments that I didn't know where they were going to go with it, right. um, but as his character was kind of inching towards the escape, um, you know, you kind of felt like, like, what is he going to do next? How, as he exposed himself more, um, you know, how how is he going to deal with that? And I love the ending too, where like you don't know where it's going to go next. So like it, it's just it provides a lot of context. Prime, prime Shyamalan, and I must say that the, my favorite aspect of this film was basically almost humanizing the villain. Yeah, you know, kind of turning the the bad guy into the good guy. Sure, and kind of like the the real gray area that yeah. this character is going. And I, I thought Brilliant. they did. I thought they did a great job in in balancing the father aspect, yeah. like um, the whole kind of plot um, line with the girl, the girl's friend's mother that mm -hmm. he meets in the concert. You felt for him as a father, you know, and and you felt like you know like you felt the frustration. Um, but at the same time, you're like, oh, like she has no idea who she's confronting. You know, like, <laughs> oh my God, she's confronting a, a, a serial killer, right. and she doesn't know that. And um, so it's it's you, you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know if she if if she's going to be used as an accomplice, right. if she's going to be used as um, a shield of sorts, you know, for him to get out. So I was kind of curious where where uh, they were going to go uh, yeah. with that. Um, and Very kind of in in my opinion, it turned more comedic, you know, than anything with her. But um, it was fun to kind of see that play out. Very so. yeah, the the plot was very unpredictable. Yeah. And I love that it was kind of twisted. Yeah. In pure Shyamalan fashion. Yeah. And, you know, to go back where what you were mentioning with uh, the trailer and exposing kind of the, the big premise that, um, you know, that he is the killer and this is a trap. Um, I heard, you know, a lot of buzz on the internet, you know, about 
you know, the twist and, you know, the fact that there, you know, was there a twist? Is there a twist? And the the fact that they hated the fact that everything was exposed in the trailer. I love that. You know, yeah. like I felt like okay. he's done he's done so many twists in the past. Why not expose the premise and see how it plays out? And I thought it was a great a great movie to kind of see that and see how 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 it turns out. So yeah. Agreed, sir. Agreed. Um yeah. Ryan, I don't want to forget about you. Uh, <laughs> what were your thoughts on the film? Uh, I'll start with the good, um, because I actually didn't love the film. Uh, I, I actually, I, I saw all of its flaws almost immediately. Um, I, I get, I think with Shyamalan, you know, obviously it's, it's hard to top, uh, The Sixth Sense, you know, I, I, that was one of my favorite films of 99 when it came out. And so obviously, you know, he's sort of known for, you know, when you go into one of his films, you're expecting a big payoff or big twist of some sort. And so I was sort of watching the film sort of trying to second guess his moves to see like what could be the twist and you know a couple of times I thought maybe the whole thing was just in his head like the concert just wasn't there I thought maybe his daughter was the you know a ghost or just a figment of his mind you know there were and I, there were a couple of moments where the film was shot in such a way where you could you could be led to believe that um but I did I like the music I thought I thought his daughter uh did a really good job of sort of emulating um well i guess i know she is a musician so she she knows the style of, of today and it definitely felt like very current uh for the tiktok generation you know that the the, the, the music was actually pretty you know pretty catchy and uh you know uh kid cootie was uh one of the musicians that came out it was, it was a cameo um where it faltered for me was in a lot of the credibility i get it's an over-the-top sort of you know hitchcockian stylish sort of thriller uh but my, the th it's funny you guys mentioned that it felt grounded. I felt it felt light as air, and and I felt like the characters, nothing felt re believably real. I get it's a movie, it's it's over the top, but you know I feel like Shyamalan, someone that right now I mean he's you know he's funding his own film, so obviously I don't know if he has someone reading his scripts and asking all the pointed questions like you know would an audience believe this moment or that moment? But there were so many moments where you know police force aside there was, it was a, every character came across like an npc like no one felt like they had any kind of real agency or any anything outside of being uh just you know a, a script device or a contra you know they're just contrived and everything was sort of working out i never felt like a real danger towards josh's character that's why i, I just assumed everything was happening in his in his head i thought it was he was going to wake up and suddenly just be in an empty warehouse and the feds were just going to get him. I don't know. It was just, there were so many twists that where this could have gone, uh, but where it really just, uh, yeah, like I said, it was just the t-shirt the vendor. He, his, everything that was going on with him and, and how he was just helping him out. It was just like, what? Like nothing made, I don't know if I'm just bringing my New York sensibility to it, but no one felt like they were in danger. No one felt like they were at least, questioning you know uh what was going on or what you know who is this guy all of a sudden appearing everywhere uh you got Haley mills of the parent trap yeah very very clever Shyamalan. um you get that she was the mm -hmm. fbi agent um there were just and and by the end when you know his i get it he's putting his daughter out there as 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 an actress but to have her character go off like none of that made sense to, to go off with the uh, with the character and with the daughter she would have more than just a driver you know that's come on you know it just didn't make sense to me um and it just kept going from there and, and by the end i was like you know you'll know the moment i'm talking about but when the camera is like slowly panning panning over i was like show us the bike like i knew i knew what happened it was just it was like when he you know takes the bike spoke or whatever it was just like come on i i, I felt disappointed that i was predicting so much in a Shyamalan film that I was just like wow this movie just left me they really do give away a lot in the trailer but one of the I'd say the saving grace is the ending uh with Allison Pill I thought Allison Pill was a really strong uh she gave a really strong performance as as his wife mm -hmm. um who sort of you know reveals her her part in this whole thing but that was the one time where I felt actual danger. Like I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot what the movie was rated. So I didn't know how far it was going to go. And it, it really did get to the edge of this. That's where the suspense, you know, really picked up in terms of his the, the danger of his character and and, you know, that he was a threat. Uh, but up until that, really up until that ending, uh, I never felt any kind of I never 
I never felt any real suspense or anything because I wanted him to get caught if he's if he's guilty. Mm-hmm. So really, it was, I'd say it's that scene with Alison Pill at the table that really uh, showed Shyamalan as a as a good you know suspense director. But other than that, everything else just felt like this could literally just be in his head or what. I didn't know where it was going, but I, I was there were so many unbelievable moments that I was just scratching my head mostly. So sorry to go on a rant, but that was I just seen it recently and <laughs> I was just. As a, as a, and I, I write scripts and I read scripts and I watch a lot of horror films. And so I felt the script happening as it was happening. Like, I just felt like, man, that was a note that he could have he could have accepted, but he probably didn't get because he's producing his own movie. So it's like, you know, normally you get a note and say, hey, I don't know if an audience would buy this particular moment though. This this takes me out of it. And he's just he's just making the movie and he, he writes it and he makes it. And that's what we're seeing. I think I agree with you, Brian, that the, the script could have used a lot more tightening. Um, they're kind of like weird. And, and Chris, as you said, there's some plot holes there. So, you know, sure. I, was, I wasn't I was blown away, but, you know, it, it was a decent film. It kind of had that like 90s thriller charm to it, which I kind of enjoyed. Yeah, it was like that. Was it the Palma film uh, uh, with the, the boxing ring? And it's like, uh, oh, just, just, oh, is that uh, Snake Eyes? Snake Eyes. It was. I. I could see what he was going for, and even I think Nick of Time. I think with uh, Johnny Depp. That there's that whole sort of thing we have, like the, 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 the spectacle of the major event as right. the backdrop, and you know he he pays a lot of really good attention to. It. I I thought the the backdrop of the concert was great. I thought they they did a really good job with that. It was just the little plot mechanics. It, it overall wasn't as clever as Shyamalan mm-hmm. thought no. it was. <laughs> and speaking of other Shyamalan films and. We don't have nearly as much time as I had hoped, but we're gonna try to do this. We're gonna try to do this the right way. Um, I wanted to go back to where it all began uh, for M Night Shyamalan in 1992. He uh, produced, he wrote, directed, and starred in sort of a. I think it was like a student film he did. Uh, it felt like that. Praying with anger. And it's basically uh, it, it's semi autobiographical, yeah. Uh, where he basically mm-hmm. plays a young student, a young college student who goes back to India to uh, learn about his roots, to get in touch with his family. And along the way, you've got kind of a stereotypical love interest, a stereotypical uh, bully, um, and it's not a groundbreaking film at all. It's 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 fairly well made. Um, I I couldn't really tell because I saw it on YouTube and it was very blurry and couldn't really hear it, (laughs) but you can still kind of get the sense, uh, not the sixth sense, but a sense of this film (laughs) and what he was going after. And I think for a first film, it was pretty, pretty decent. So I want to get your, your guys thoughts from the original film, the, the movie that started his career. Chris, what did you think of praying with anger? I think uh, I think you nailed it, uh, Randy. I think it's it's not the the tone, it's not the voice, I should say, of of what we would expect from M Night as a mature as a as a filmmaker who is is really comfortable in in his uh, shoes, but it has the workings of of that a tour, and you could tell even at that age that um, and at that debut level that there was something there um you can tell by just the you know the cinematography you could tell by the dialogue i was impressed i think that was my my biggest takeaway is that for a first time filmmaker uh and script writer that the the dialogue felt um felt natural um and and i felt like for an immigrant uh filmmaker Taking on some familiar territory was a wise move because it it shows that he it shows more confidence um, earlier on and it, it only layered from there as he developed you know sixth sense and and really uh, blew up from there. So was it was it something that I would revisit again? No, but <laughs> it's always <laughs> it's always interesting to see you know like. You could tell that there's something there. Um, you know, at, like if you look at, you know, something I won't say comparable, but just for the, for the sake of of comparison, like a Mean Streets, you know, with Martin Scorsese, you know, 
it it doesn't blow your socks off like that did for for um for something like that that took Martin Scorsese off the ground and, and up. Um, but you could tell that you know there was there's something special there. And um yeah, I, I think it's uh it's uh not an incredible film. Is it rewatchable? Sure. For like just a comparison piece um for for podcasts that we're <laughs> we're doing retrospectives on. Um, it's not something that you, you know, it's not sure, but at the same time, um, you know, there's plenty of other works of his that, that stand out. And I, I think it's, if it wasn't for this and, and, and this climb, uh, we wouldn't get something like Unbreakable or The Village or Signs or, or any one of his masterpieces. So, yeah. I, I definitely w wouldn't mind revisiting it on like maybe DVD where, where the audio and video is cleaned up a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that was probably what you know <laughs> turned me off to the whole thing, but I think it was an okay movie. Uh, I, I felt like the uh, the quality kind of played into that '90s like public service announcement type. Of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw one I saw one comment on YouTube like, "Boy, this is the longest M Night <laughs> ever." Like, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, it kind of feels like that." So yeah. yeah. But uh, hey, it's out there on YouTube if anyone wants to check it out. So, um, Brian, what were your thoughts on this uh, weird little gem? <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely felt like a, a student film. Um, uh, he's not, he's, he hasn't quite, sorry, he hasn't quite improved as an actor, I would say. Uh, it's, <laughs> I, it's, it's, that, that long cameo uh, comment, <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Um, I could, what I could see, and I, what I see in a lot of his films is, you know, he'll have a, have a, a film of ideas and he'll have the characters sort of discuss those ideas in dialogue that's sort of heightened for like screenplays or, you know, like films, but it doesn't feel, it borders on where sometimes the subtext isn't quite there. It's not, you know, characters are saying what they're feeling or, you know, just talking things out, and it, which is fine. You know, I mean, you get some gems like, again, when you go into Sixth Sense, you have like the mother and son talking and talking things out that can be very heartfelt and interesting here because it's an earlier, earlier work. It definitely feels like it was like a, written like an outline, like a thesis. Like it's like, okay, we're going to, here we're going to, tackle this cultural is issue and and that sort of thing and it's sort of going in an order until the ending i thought that that one little suspenseful scene with the guy uh almost being lit on fire i thought that was very effective because uh, i thought was, i thought maybe he was going to go there i didn't know where where it was headed it was it was i thought the tension was ramped up pretty well but overall i found it like you said like you mentioned it's kind of stereotypical a little cliche here and there i don't think M. Night was the person to, to lead the, the film. I don't think he was a strong lead as an actor, um, especially towards the end uh, when they had the sort of romantic, heartfelt, you know, dialogue. It didn't didn't sell uh, really well. So, yeah, you know, I, I think overall his the overall arc of his career just comes mm -hmm. across as, and I'm not slamming him, I'm just saying like, you know, you might need that extra person to say no like yeah. on some of the choices like maybe just someone to read the scripts and say yeah maybe not or you know i don't, I don't think he i don't know if he has that person i, or, I yeah i agree with that 100 percent. you should always have a proofreader and but i like, guess <laughs> i also <laughs> i also think there's something about someone so young who's making the bold choices of all right i'm gonna i'm gonna direct this i'm gonna write this i'm gonna produce this and right. in in took those learnings and, and findings and, and made that into his career, you know, and, yeah. and I mean, essentially like that gave him the guts to make something like a sixth sense and, and really blow up. So like, I always admire that when like, uh, when filmmakers like kind of go against the studio, you know, and kind of like, you know, just, you know, try to do their own thing um, and try to go against the grain of the naysayers a little bit. So um so I, I I give him a lot of respect. Yeah. And he wasn't always horror. I think he he then he co wrote or he wrote Stuart Little, right? And, and <laughs> he wrote Stuart Little uh, in yeah. Wide Awake, yeah. same year as Sixth Sense, actually. Um, so, so he does like he has that dramatic flair, which you know yeah. in most horror films now you want to have that drama aspect in addition to the scares. That's that's something yeah. that's being even even more promoted now. But um, it always. I think I, I and I just uh, revisited Unbreakable today, and I really appreciate you know what he did in it. I might actually buy mm -hmm. that one. It was, it was really, I think that's a very accomplished, uh, ambitious work. Yeah. Um, oh, it's one that yeah, it's, Unbreakable is <clears throat> probably 
if not my favorite one of my my favorite favorites it's, it's really good out. yeah yeah it's, it's, it's really, it is really very good, good. It's, and it's a very solid superhero story mm -hmm. absolutely yeah his own original you know, story there. Um, yeah <laughs> and i you know what i originally guys i wanted to go down the entire filmography of m night but i don't think we're gonna have time for that so um, I know, Brian, you kind of touched on it, but after Praying with Anger, uh, M. Night's first like relatively big film was in 1998. It's called Wide Awake. And it basically, uh, it's got Dennis Leary, Rosie O'Donnell, and it follows Joseph Cross's character, um, the young boy in Catholic school. And basically, you know, kind of like he, he loses his grandfather played by a great Robert Loggia. And he's just trying to like search for answers, search for God. And it's a very interesting film. It's, it's, it's got a great cast. It's got a very uh, important message. And um, he did that one year before making it big with uh, The Sixth Sense. So that movie is called Wide Awake. And I highly recommend that one. Um, it is better than Praying With Anger. And it's interesting how his, his career, the trajectory it's like really, it really is a roller coaster ride, his career. And since we don't really have time to talk about every yeah. single movie, yeah, I just want to make a comment on that. And that's, yeah. I, I love the fact that it's a roller coaster. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's why he is an auteur director and that's why he is who he is, you know, is because he is willing to, to take chances. And that's something that is completely lost um, in, in today's day and age. I, um, I I felt so good going to the movie theater watching this because I felt like this whole experience seeing Trap, you know, is just is lost today. And mm. you know, like I feel like we're we're almost um, you know, we're almost led to believe that every theater experience has to be this mind melting, you know, spectacular event that you know has to just like you know make us you know just blow our minds. But sometimes it's it's just great to make us think and make us you know it's trying to kind of see different avenues that a filmmaker can take so it's yeah. it, it was nice <laughs> movies like this this is the sweet spot mm -hmm. i think chris you were talking about i yeah. totally agree with you yeah you need more movies yeah. like this i'm not for, not for the sake of going down his whole filmography but i think it is to mention that i think the visit and up you know from there i think that's where he changed course right. like he he tested out some blockbusters like with airbender and uh the will smith movie but like after earth um, yeah. yeah right but i, I couldn't think, get through that it was so bad yeah mm. and I, yeah and i think <laughs> you know i think he he kind of got dethroned at that point and the visit was really his like chance to shine again and i think this like he he was working with a five million dollar budget and like the first weekend he got 45 million so like that's and i think those type of films uh knock on the cabin old you know like this the, the trap i think it's just it's where he could be i i could see him be like the the horror slash genre uh filmmaker that like a woody allen or clint eastwood is <laughs> where they're, he's kind of just belting out one a year and it's either a hit or miss but at least you know that he's there you know and the right. yeah. I just had a thought. What if Woody Allen did a horror movie? That'd be so strange. <laughs> anyway, I think his uh, I think his personal life is the horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> touche, sir. Touche. Um, Brian, if you could pick your favorite, your number one Shyamalan film, I would go with uh, Sixth Sense. Okay. I always try to, try to get the th in there. The Sixth Sense, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, only because I, you know, it's it's. What really for me put him on the map, and I I think uh, Tony Collette's performance in there is criminally underrated. It's it's great, um, what he what he's able to bring out of all of his actors, you know, especially like giving you know Bruce Willis that that sort of heartfelt uh, character, but also you know Haley Joel Osment's great. I I think it's that's a really good one, and yeah, I I'd say that's the pinnacle that he's been trying to hit ever since. But mm -hmm. uh, I was really impressed with Unbreakable too. So uh, you know. Nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome choices. Chris, how about you, sir? 
It could change. Um, it could change on a daily basis. Um, I love the sixth sense uh, because it was such like it, the the ending is the ending that made all endings, you know. But like I gotta say, once you see that ending, like it kind of loses its luster a little bit. Like even nowadays, <laughs> but I for me, I think the visit like really shifted the gears for him and really kind of anchored him. And um, so I would say the visit kind of is one of my favorite. But, you know, as far as like a sit down movie that, you know, like if it's on, I'll just watch Unbreakable. I love Unbreakable. Awesome choices as well. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, The Visit's are just a great example of like found footage horror yeah. that we haven't yeah. really seen. Yeah. Since, and, uh, like yeah. Blair Witch or well, even maybe like Cloverfield. Yeah, I mean, he really starts these trends. I mean, 